Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. Alongside my recent three decks for beginners video, I also wanted to provide some more easy to craft decks for newer and intermediate players. I'll be covering each region one after another, that way you have a direction to go based on your favorite region. Hello, my name is Tempo and I've hit master tier every season since the beta, even peaking rank 1 multiple times on the North American ladder, and I will be your guide to Legends of Runeterra. So small disclaimer before I get into the first one, these decks won't be able to be crafted day 1. These are primarily meant as solid cores to go for after a few weeks of playing and understanding which regions or playstyles you enjoy the most. If you want the easiest and most budget decks to craft, I recommend checking out my 3 decks for beginners video from a few weeks ago. And we're heading on to Ionia. And for the first one, we're going to have a deck that new players will love because it's very easy to play, but even easier to craft. The champions required are Zed and Nar, which you start with multiple copies of both from the tutorial decks, and the rest of the deck is comprised of only commons and rares, so this is going to be a fantastic first deck for you, getting into Ionia. The main strategy of this deck is Elusive Cheese, so what we're going to be doing is playing Elusive Units that can't be blocked, and also trying to stat buff them with the strong cards from Freljord. So getting into the list specifically, we have Navori Blade Scout, 1 mana 2 1. When I'm summoned, give me Elusive this round. We're often not going to play him right on turn 1. What we want to do is save Navori Blade Scout for the mid game so that we can play him alongside Green Glade Duo already being on the board. Bonus points if we have multiple Blade Scouts and if they're buffed by Omen Hawk. And then just trying to set him up for like a big one turn push because he only has Elusive for the round that he's summoned. We can honestly play him on turn 1 if we really want to just for 2 cheesy damage, but again, it might be better to play him out later on. And next we have the much better one drop to play on turn 1, Omenhawk. He's a 1 mana 1-1 one, one that says, when I'm summoned, grant the top 2 allies in your deck plus 1 plus 1. Since we are playing elusives and it's hard to block them, they get a lot of value from the plus 1 plus 1 boost. It makes them a little bit harder to deal with in terms of like, if the opponent has removal, hey, maybe our units are a bit too tanky with the plus 1 HP, and honestly, the plus 1 attack goes a long way, especially if you get multiple hits in with the same buffed elusive unit. Bonus side note, Omenhawk can also block enemy units with Elusive, so he's a good out to the mirror match. He's really good just in general versus any other Elusive strategy like Teemo stuff. So honestly, just an auto-include in this deck. Super nice that he's a common, probably one of the best cards in the entire game, especially for new players. Next we have Triple Wuju Style. This is a really cool card from Ionia. It starts as a 1 mana burst speed spell that gives your ally plus 2 plus 0, and it also creates a second card in your hand that costs 2. This one gives your ally plus 0 plus 2 HP. So combined, it's a 3 mana plus 2 plus 2 boost, or you can just use the first one as like a way to trade over things or push extra damage. If you have a bunch of elusives, you can play multiple Wuju styles and get like plus 4 or plus 6, which goes a long way. That's like a lot of damage. So yeah, Wuju style is just like a super flexible card, really nice for Ionia to have. And next we have Green Glade Duo. This is one of our powerhouse cards. One of the ones that we want to invest in the most, actually. 2 mana, 2, 1, elusive. When you summon another ally, give me plus 1, plus 0 this round. Okay, so what we want to do is set up Green Glade Duo as early as possible, have mana to protect her, maybe she got hit by Omenhawk, that all feels fantastic for us. So what we're going to want to do is set her up as early as possible, and then sometime in the mid game play a bunch of dudes back to back to back, and ramp up her attack so she gets one really big swing in. So this is why we can save our Navori Blade Scouts for like maybe a turn 4 play, so we already have Duo set up, and then we play something like Tusk Speaker plus double Navori Blade Scout, then Green Glade Duo is going to get a plus 3 and you're hitting with the Blade Scouts, and it's going to feel really good. Next we have Navori Conspirator, 2 mana 2 2, elusive. To play me, recall an ally, recall puts it back in your hand. Uh, you do have to have something on the board to play a Conspirator, so keep that in mind. The most value we're going to get from this effect is probably hitting Omen Hawk because we can replay the Omen right after, so that feels really good. That way we can get more buffs on our units and just kind of keep up the pressure. We can also hit like Shadow Assassin to get another draw and stuff like that, but honestly, yeah, just pretty decent targets in general. You can also use it on a unit that's been injured and then replay it for full HP, so hey, that's good too. And he's an elusive attacker as well, so Conspirator just comes up in some of those more niche situations. Next we have Sky Splitter, another one of the best cards from Freljord. 2 mana burst speed spell, give an ally plus 1 plus 3. This is mainly going to be used as protection since it is very HP heavy. So when the opponent is trying to shoot our elusive units, like let's say our Green Glade duo, they're trying to kill it with Mystic Shot, well now we just pay 2 mana to fully protect her. And that feels good as well. Obviously we want to have this in our pocket, that way we can keep our elusives nice and healthy and keep attacking with them. 
Next we have Triple Tusk Speaker. Not an elusive, he's just like a really good Freljord card, especially if he gets hit by Omenhawk or also Yadulski, which is the same effect and we'll talk about soon. So yeah, he can come down as a 3-2. Sometimes he can come down as a 4-3 if he gets hit by a buff, and that is just insane, especially as an Overwhelm attacker because then the piercing damage is going to come through. The on-play deal one to the uh, Nexuses is also going to be super relevant since you are trying to play a more aggressive playstyle. So honestly, just an overall good card. Even though he's not elusive, he still has synergy with other parts of the deck. Next, we have Yadulski, which is basically just another Omen Hawk. Two mana, two, three. On attack call, grant the top two allies in your deck plus one, plus one. Again, we care about the stats, so Yadulski is very good, especially if Omen Hawk hits Yadulski uh, on turn one, and then you play Yadulski on two as a three, four. That's just insane. So, really, really good. Next, we have another elusive unit, Shadow Assassin. Three mana, two, one. When I'm summoned, draw one. So it's really nice to have a little bit of a refill. She pays for herself and she gives you a new card. And hopefully that new card is another elusive unit, more pressure, maybe Sky Splitter. Just really good to dig into the deck a little bit. If she gets hit by any buffs, then she's going to be hitting a bit harder as well. Next we have Zed. He has Quick Attack. While attacking, he strikes before its blocker. So like, let's say a 2-2 blocks Zed. Zed will strike it first before taking any damage back. If he kills the enemy unit, the enemy unit doesn't deal damage to Zed. So quick attack, very strong, aggressive keyword. Makes him really, really good on attack calls. So also when he attacks, he summons a living shadow with his stats, which is going to be 3-2 unless he's hit by an Omenhawk buff or a Yadulski buff. Then the shadow will reflect his stats, which is really strong. Um, also, he levels up if he and also his shadow, or he himself twice, his shadow twice, it kind of just means like two hits to Nexus, and then boom, he levels. And then he'll level and basically just become a little bit harder to deal with. And his living shadow that he attacks with will now also copy his keywords, which is a little bit relevant with the next card we're going to talk about. Fey Guide, 4 mana 3, 4, play, grant an ally elusive, so we can make any of our units elusive. We can make Tusk Speaker elusive, Yadulski, Zed, Nar, sorry, and all kinds of crazy stuff. Fey Guide really does open up a world of hurt for the opponent if they can't answer it. So just having Elusive Zed is disgusting. If he does level, then him and his shadow are going to be elusive attackers, which is just absolutely insane. Yeah, Fey Guide, really, really cool for that. Especially if you play Zed on like defense three, go into Fey Guide first action turn four, the opponent's gonna be like, oh no, not Elusive Zed, please. So really cool combo to play into each other. Next, we have Nar, our other champion coming in from Freljord. 4 mana, 3-3, three, three, also with quick attack. On strike, create a Pokey Stick in hand, or if you already have one, reduce its cost by 2. Pokey Stick is really sick because it's going to deal 1 to anything while also drawing you a card, just for 2 mana. Again, you can make this card cost 0 if Nar strikes twice, which is good too. And then you can use this to like ping the enemy face, uh, get a little bit more damage in, or you can hit like a 1 HP unit that the opponent has developed and then draw a card, which is super good. That way you can find more elusive units, find more defensive tools, anything you need to try to win the game. He levels up if you've damaged the enemy Nexus uh, during the round, and then he becomes Mega Nar. When he's Mega, he, he grants the strongest enemy vulnerable, allowing you to pull it, which is super nice, especially since he has Overwhelm. So you can manipulate the attack in your favor, try to get some extra damage that way. And also he levels down back into regular Nar if you start the turn with the attack token. So after your attack turn is done with Mega Nar, he goes back. And then he can get you another Pokey Stick, and then you have to re-level him, and then re-grant Vulnerable. And he kind of goes back and forth, which is cool. It's a pretty unique mechanic that Nar has, and it's honestly a good one. It kind of sounds like a bad thing, but no, it's pretty good. So, yeah, Nar just super solid. We can also give him Elusive, and that's really annoying as well. So, just another strong champion to play around, especially if he gets hit by any of the plus one, plus one buffs. Next, we have Glacial Saurian, 5 mana, 5, 4, Overwhelm. When I'm summoned, grant the top three units in your deck, plus one, plus one. So again, that classic plus one, plus one Freljord buff, we love that. If an ally has a different subtype than me, draw one of those units. So if you have a unit on the board that has a different subtype than Reptile, then he will also draw you one, just like the Shadow Assassin and just like the Pokey Stick. So we are just going to continue that theme. The subtypes in the deck that we're looking for are Yordle, Bird. Let's see here, we also have Dog. And we have another Yordle. And we have another Yordle. So as long as any of those are on the board, Saurian will count this and then give you the draw one. And that feels really good too. Next, we have another elusive unit, Windsinger. Six mana, three, three, elusive. Play, recall a unit. 
Recall puts it back in the hand. So what we want to do with this is target one of our opponent's units, maybe something they've developed, maybe a strong champion, and just pop it right back into their hand as we develop a 3-3 elusive body. Again, at some point, maybe this Windsinger got hit by buffs. This could be a 4-4 or a 5-5 even coming in with elusive and swinging while also hurting the opponent's strategy, slowing them down, and popping something back into their hand. So honestly, just a really strong and versatile card, especially for a common. And rounding us out, we have one Battle Fury just for cheese. It is an 8 mana burst speed spell that grants an ally 8 4. So, what we want to do with this is maybe open attack with some elusives and throw Gnar in there. Then the opponent determines block targets and stuff like that. Maybe uses some removal. And then we get a chance to use this as a plus 8 boost to try to finish out the game. Or if you're pretty confident, honestly, you can pre commit this on one of your elusives and just send it. And then you have a plus eight attack, which is just insane. If you get away with it, then it's pretty much game winning. That's so much damage going in. So use this at the right time as one of your finisher cards. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how the deck plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. So for the example game, we're going to be fighting a pretty slow and control deck. This is Nora Karma. They want to use removal on our units, try to shoot them down, and stall to turn 10 so Karma can level and give them extra value. But we have a very solid hand. The only thing I would really want here is Sky Splitter, but honestly, we can just play on Curve, which is play a 1 drop on 1, 2 drop on 3, I mean, sorry, 2 drop on 2, 3 on 3, 4 on 4, and be pretty happy. They full kept their hand too, so that's a bit scary. We also have Omen Hawk to block Nora. Bursting Backpack. Oh, so that's going to be their strategy. They want to put mushrooms in our deck too. Sounds good to me. All we want to do is set up our stats and go wide, play elusives, and punch them, right? So we are going to play that. The buff to Green Glade Duel. I think that's actually better than Yadulski here because I'm pretty satisfied with my current hand. Yadulski gives us like investment for later. But uh, yeah, let's take the two mana. 3-2 a Green Glade Duel since it got hit. That's actually better than this one. And then we'll set her up later. Probably like for turn 6. And then we'll have a really strong push. So let's go ahead and get that 4 damage in here. Bonk, bonk. Pass it up. And then we're going to play Zed. Probably straight into Gnar. Wuju style is also a really good consideration. Now it means instead of playing Gnar. Hello, Nora. We could probably just open attack with Zed and have protection mana for him. That's honestly good too. What's this gonna be like? Drop the bomb or something? Oh, Pi. Okay. So they're gonna use Pi to kill our Green Blade duo. That is fine. Yep. I toss. They invest three mana into that. If Nora attacks, we block with Omen. No problem. That way we prevent the Nexus Strike. Alright, so we again have a couple options here. We can open attack with Zed before they even have a chance to develop a blocker, and then we can use Wuju style to protect him in case they're on more removal. Or we can play Omen Hawk as a 2 2, let them have a defensive action. Or we can play Gnar and then full swing and not care about protection mana. Honestly, all really good stuff. I think if I want to put the maximum amount of pressure right now, we play Gnar. When Custom Palm comes in, that stuns one. The other quick attack unit gets the swing. Block. Okay, I think Gnar is actually just the best here, yeah. There's like tons of good options with this hand. And merit to all of them. But I'm just going to go for uh, unit pressure here. Wallop, sounds good. No Zed attack. Which means if we open attacked, we would have been punished by Wallop. So let's go ahead and get Gnar in here. Gnar is going to swing, they don't want to block, so we get the pokey, and we also get the Gnar level, making Nora vulnerable. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this outcome. I'm glad I didn't open attack with Zed. Another Wuju style for damage and protection. Alright, um, Mr. Thrift. That is A-OK. -okay. Let's go ahead and do first action Omen Hawk here. That way we present a elusive blocker so that Nora can't hit us. Portal Palooza. Yep, they're going to go that route to get portals out. Portal on top one. It is an elusive unit, the android. Very, very high roll. Cool. It's swinging. I don't know why they would swing here. That's actually kind of bad. I'm down to do this and then Pokey Stick. Just finish that off. We're going to keep Nora alive because she's vulnerable, which means I can just grab her anyways. Nice. Shadow Assassin's really good. Let's play Green Glade Duo. 
and then probably Shadow Assassin first action, and just set up. Now that we have the Green Glade duo here, we can amp her up, so let's play the Shadow Assassin. Another one? See, I love all these plus one, plus ones we have. That's so nice. Double Nora, sure. Another portal. Also sure, I don't really care that much about that. So because Zed gives us another attacker via Living Shadow, we don't have to develop anything else here. We can just save our spell mana and full swing. Let's also grab Nora with our 5-5 Overwhelm unit. That way we push maximum damage there. And send out everything. Again, Zed is going to create our 6 attacker, which is full board. And we just push extra damage that way. Interesting. Interesting. That's exact lethal. You have any outs to this? Even if you do, we have protection. So we just win right here on attack turn 6. Look at that. And the next deck I have for you is another elusive strategy, since that is uh, pretty popular from Ionia. So we're going to cover a second one here. This one is pretty easy to craft as well if you want to play this budget version. However, there are some upgrades here, so quickly write this down or keep note of it. If you want to play this deck at full power, you're going to replace Forge Chief and go ahead and put in Acorn the Hex Technician. And then you're also going to replace Sparring Student or... Vestayan Disciple, and then it is the same deck. Other than that, there's only one champion, which is Teemo. You start with a couple of them anyway, so you just have to get third Teemo. And there is the Augmented Clockling as well as an Epic. That's it, though. It's like one champion and three Epics. The rest of the deck is just commons and rares, so it should be pretty easy to craft after that. And again, if you want the full power version, replace the Forge Chief for the Acorn, Sparring Student for the Vestaya Disciple, and you're good to go. But for the list specifically for this budget version, we have Forge Chief, 1 mana, 2 1, Strike, Refill, Spell Mana. Really nice that she's aggressively statted. She also gives you 1 Spell Mana back for playing her whenever she strikes. If you get 2 strikes in and refill 2 mana, oh, that feels so good. Because this deck is going to be trying to cast spells as much as possible. We have the Wuju style, we have the Mystic Shots, we have the Blowback, we have Kinku's Call, we have Shock Blast. So we really want to cast spells in this deck, as opposed to the last one that I just covered with the Zed. We, we actually care about burn lethals, so we're going to be doing a lot of the same stuff, which is build up our elusives, attack with them a lot, but to finish the game, we're going to have reliable direct damage spells, so Forge Chief can come in here as like a really good card to do that. Next, we have the Blade Scout, just like in the last deck. We're going to be using him probably in the mid game, right, to buff up the Green Glade duo and get like a wide swing in. But if we have to play him on turn one, that's not so bad. And next, we have Triple Sparring Student, one mana, one, one. When you summon another ally, give me plus one, plus one this round. So same kind of thing as Green Glade duo. However, he's not elusive, but he ramps up his HP, which makes him just like a really big dude that the opponent has to chump block. So oftentimes, this one mana, one, one can be like a five, five and just get a lot of pressure for you and make the opponent have to like trade very uncomfortably against your one drop or they take direct damage to the face by him just smacking them down for four or five damage. So Sparring Student can come up again really good replacement for the Vestayan Disciple and he's just like pretty decent all around for these like swarm decks. Next we have Triple Teemo coming in. We do not care about his level up um, because we're probably just not going to be planting that many puff caps. He's going to come in as an elusive attacker, get some puff caps in their deck, and maybe they draw it and take some additional damage over the course of the game. Really good against, like, super heavy draw decks, because they have a higher chance of drawing into the shrooms. But for the most part, yeah, we're not all inning the puff caps. But if we do get him to attack, what, like, four times total, then he can double the puff caps and be really, really annoying for the opponent that they're going to take, like, 15 extra damage. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. And that's about it. Next we have Wuju style, just the same as the last deck. Really good Ionia combat trick, especially for these aggressive and like cheap and easy to play, like low cost decks. So Wuju style comes in really nice plus two and also another plus two for an additional two mana. Green Glade Duo doing the same thing as the last deck, two mana, two, one elusive, ramping up. We are applying her as soon as we can and then getting her really strong on attack turns and swinging for a bunch of unblockable damage. Triple Mystic Shot to help close out the game. We can also use Mystic to shoot really annoying like elusive blockers in the early game like enemy elusives like Nora. We can just Mystic Shot it or we can shoot like Omen Hawk stuff like that and then we get our elusives through. Next we have Sting Officer, 2 mana, 1, 2, elusive. Next to Strike, plant 2 Flash Bomb Traps in the top 8 cards of the enemy deck. Flash Bomb Traps deal 1 damage for each trap on it to the enemy board. It's random, so it's just going to hit, like, you know, a couple things. If the opponent just has, like, a 1 HP unit on the board, hey, the Flash Bomb Trap will clean them up. So Sting Officer is really nice at getting your board ahead while whittling the opponent's board down. 
Next, we have Shadow Assassin. Three mana, two, one. When I'm summoned, draw one. Elusive Attacker. That draws you a card. So that's super solid. And we have Augmented Clockling here. A really strong elusive card from PNZ. It's a four mana, two, two with elusive. However, on play, you get to predict. So you're shown three cards from deck. You draw it immediately and you discount it by one. So that's like just better than draw straight up. You get to pick what you want him to hit. And it's also discounted for one mana. So you can get like all kinds of really strong stuff. You can get some cool green glade dual combos going because you play a bunch of cheap stuff and then she keeps ramping. So honestly, he's really, really good. He's a strong epic. Um, you can uh, replace him for other elusives in the meantime if you only have commons and rares. But I'd recommend getting him like as soon as possible because he's super solid, especially in like these beginner decks. I've been seeing him more and more. So really good option there. Next, we have triple blowback. This is a finisher card to help us close out the game. It deals one damage to an enemy and also the enemy nexus, so it hurts both. If you discard up to two cards, you can increase the damage by one for each card you discard. So you can do up to three damage to an enemy unit and the enemy nexus in one go. So that's really nice, especially if we're on multiple blowback and just like a bunch of bad cards in our hand. We can just discard them all, turn them into direct damage and fire it at the opponent for lethals. And next we have King Ku's Call. This is a really cool spell, actually. Four mana slow speed spell. Summon a Keeper of Masks right now or at the next round start and draw a card. Keeper of Masks is a two mana two three. When I'm summoned, give other allies plus one this round. So basically you're using King Ku's Call in your attack turn to summon him right away. Or if you're on defense turn, you summon Keeper of the Mask the following turn. That way you can just get a really strong open attack. And this is really nice because Keeper of the Mask is a summon. So when he's summoned, the Green Glade Duo will go up. The Sparring Student will go up. So they get their own innate plus boost. And then it's also going to grant them plus one as well for the, for the round. So Keeper, just honestly, really, really good card. Love this card. It also draws you one. So just really solid for trying to get those wide lethals going. Next, we have Double Shock Blast. Same thing as the Blowback. We're just using this as direct damage. Deal three to an enemy or the enemy Nexus three to another for six mana. It's the same thing, but we don't have to discard. It's just more expensive. So yeah, it's also slow speed. So keep that in mind. This is going to be a finisher to deal three direct damage to the enemy Nexus. And then finally, to round us out, we have Wind Singer. Just like in the last deck, really good elusive body that also slows down the opponent's game plan. If they invest in like a really big champion on turn six, like Viego or something, you just whip it right back into their hand while also developing a 3-3 unit. So that's really annoying for them. They're going to hate it. And uh, you're going to have a nice elusive attacker to go along with that very strong recall effect. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. Yo, isn't that crazy? For the example game, we're fighting the deck that we just covered. Looks like uh, they already pre-watched this video somehow. So this is Zed Nar Elusives. We know exactly what they're doing. Uh, we want to have probably not the clock. I like the Forge Chief, the Teemo, the Blade Scout. This is all good. Be on multiple one drops in the early game. That way you can just slam them. I'll send it. Oh yeah, multiple Blade Scouts. That's gonna be so good if we find a duo. Blowback, also good. Turn one. Let's go ahead and play out our Forge Chief. And then next turn we can do double blade scout or we can do blade scout teemo or another forge chief and another teemo all right let's, let's do another forge chief and then we play timmy see what they do probably a dual ski here or a green glade duo or something like that i'm pretty happy with this hand though just being on a bunch of one drops and direct damage is pretty nice since we are playing super aggressive and we're gonna get our mana back yep there's the yeah, dual ski as i figured let's go ahead and get teemo in here I'll send it. We're going to get two spell mana back. That is awesome. All right. So we're going to save Blade Scouts for our next attack turn, which, uh, wow, I guess we're just doing all of that at once. All right. Uh, sounds good to me. I guess our next turn is literally just triple Blade Scout. I could play one this turn if I really want to, but I don't know. It does prevent me from burning some mana. We could also just play Blowback for one. That also doesn't sound that bad. Takes away a blocker from them too. Just hit skip and then do Blowback for one. I don't burn any mana and then I go into next turn. That's pretty fine since I kind of plan on playing out my entire hand. I don't want to discard them anyways. And we just took away uh, Yadulski, so... Omen, yeah. That is pretty annoying. More plus one plus one. That's not a great play now. Would have been better to use on this defense turn. Let's play Blade Scout. So Omen's probably going to block one of them. Hopefully no more elusives or elusive blockers. 
we're basically just gonna have an elusive off and see what happens. Husk? That's great. That's actually hurting you more than it hurts me, I think. At least for now. Long term, that's gonna hurt me a lot more. But short term, that is uh, some damage that I will take. Okay. And then we only attack with our elusives here, right? 2-1 is just going to die. Well, no, because then we can block him back. So honestly, that's worth. It's also good for our spell mana. So let's send Forge Chief. She gets blocked by 5-4, but he will be left with 2 HP so we can block it back with Blade Scout next turn. And then uh, that'll be the Tusk Speaker dealt with. So yeah, we just full send. Play full aggression. Try to get some damage out. They could also block Blade Scout to the Forge Chief and go that route too and not damage the Tusk Speaker. That's also fine. That's up to them. They're probably on like Sky Splitter too, so we do have to be mindful that they have buffs and we don't. We have like direct damage instead. Alright, we get to keep our Teemo as well. Which is kind of cool. That's more Puff Caps in there. Hopefully those come up. Hey, there it is! Plus one damage. Let's play Augmented Clockling here over the Shadow Assassin. Because I really want to see the card. And it's just more mana efficient. Gnar, huh? Gnar is a bit annoying. Uju style blowback Kinku's Call. I kind of want to do Kinku's Call. And just have a really strong open. Yeah, so let's also go ahead and block here and here. Just keep our elusives alive. Um, Teemo's probably going to get hit by the Pokey Stick. Which is a bit annoying. Nar is going to level as well. No big deal though. So summon a Keeper of the Masks next round start. And also draw me a card. If we hit another one drop, that'll be nice. Come on, just Pokey my Teemo. You know you wanna. There you go. Pokey the Timmy. Another Shroom. Yeah, keep drawing cards. Greenglade Duo. Ooh. Hmm. That makes my Keeper of the Masks a lot less good. <laughs> Alright. No big deal, though. Honestly, I'm kind of down to play out both of these. Especially if we get another one drop. And they're taking more Shroom damage. Yo, they can't stop taking Shroom damage. Alright, so the proper order... Yeah, they're kind of mad about it, too. Greenglade Duo first, and then we play both of these. I should have saved the Keeper of the Mask for this turn, probably. But, hey, it is what it is. I'm happy that it gave me the extra draw. So I could, like, play out this turn like this. Then we'll go Timmy. Timmy buffs the duo. And then we're just threatening Lethal, I guess. If they're not on any elusive blockers, better watch out. But Nara is sitting here not going to do anything. Emo. So I guess we just out aggression the elusive mirror match. Pop, pop. Love all that. Ooh. Let's go ahead and send it. There's no reason to really attack with the 2 3. I'm just doing it because I'm pretty confident we're winning here. Three sisters, yes. And then what, Flash Freeze? That's not going to be enough. Because even if they freeze the um, Green Glade duo, that's still exact lethal. Wait, well, you going to be on two of them? Ain't no way you're on double three sisters here. Oh, Will of Ionia. That's interesting, isn't it? That's a cute little play. I guess we're still in it. They got a little uh, defensive utility in there. Alright, just draw three shrooms so I can laugh. Aw, oh, no shroomage. They're probably so sick of my Teemo though. Zed, that's all good. We'll play Sting Officer here. Wow, Zed got double buff. Look at that. That's how strong that Freljord strategy is though. Omen, Yadulski, now Zed's just a 5-4. That's crazy. I was so confident we were going to win, I just set my Keeper. kind of wish we kept him now, huh? Kind of wish we kept him. But honestly, we should be fine. We can just block with Sting Officer and go next turn. 
play out some more shrooms. That's what happens when you start BMing though. Now I might get punished for it a little bit. I was so confident we were just going to win. Um, Blade Scout, sure. Right. I mean, all we have to consider is Sky Splitter plus one and also Wuju style plus two, right? So let's not die to direct spell damage. Let's go ahead and put this thing officer here. We are currently dying to Wuju, so we do have to put an additional thing up. We can go ahead and do Shadow Assassin on this. And now there's just guaranteed no way we take lethal. Like, there's no way they're pushing seven. And then we play Mushroom Cloud to go into open. Basically, their defensive utility stalled the turn, and that's it. We're definitely still winning, right, guys? Surely we don't lose here. Hey, yo, chill. Okay, that's fine. I don't think I care about random shadow shift. Like I said, still not leveling. I just so desperately want them to take Shroom Lethal. I think that'd be so funny. But yeah, we're just going to open attack since we have elusives and they don't. Oh. <laughs> We're going to see another emote in three, two, oh, surrender. <laughs> They're actually so mad they didn't even emote. And for the last one, I wanted to deviate away from the elusive and really go for a more like combat heavy and board control focused deck. And that is going to be Barrier Boys with Shen and Jarvan. This is also going to be the most expensive deck since you don't start with Shen or Jarvan, you will have to craft these. And there's also two epics that you have to craft as well with the Sacred Protector. So this is the one if you're definitely like the most rich to go for. And also if you want to play a more like Demacia playstyle where you just care about setting up the board and then beating down the opponent with your units. So yeah, this deck is really cool. It's like a pure hybrid between Ionia and Demacia. So if that sounds good to you, would recommend saving up for this one. Starting us off, we have Fleet Feather Tracker, 1 mana 2 1. When you summon another ally, grant me Challenger. Challenger's good because we want to control the board and also play with barriers. Barriers prevents us from taking damage from one instance, so we can do barrier on the Fleet Feather Tracker, have it challenge something, kill it, and live. So that's super good. That's where a lot of our pressure is going to be coming from. Our next one drop is very, very strong. 1 mana 1 2. When an ally gets barrier, grant me 2 0. Uh, she keeps the buff, and this keeps going forever. So she's going to be like a 3, 5, 7, 9. Usually like a 9 attack unit, which is disgusting because it's a 1 drop. The fact that it doesn't cap is kind of weird. So yeah, the caretaker gets really strong, especially if you open multiple and play a bunch of barriers and protect her. She naturally just beats down the opponent by herself. There's been some games where I've seen caretaker just solo win the game. So really, really strong to get down early and invest in. Next, we have our first barrier card, Brightstone Protector, 2-2-1. Two, two, Play, give an ally barrier this round. Really good on attack, really good on defense as well, because if the opponent is playing a combat heavy deck and you play barrier, honestly, they might not even want to attack anymore because it's just not worth it. So Protector, really, really strong, very, very flexible, just like the barrier keyword in general. Next, we have Triple Form Up coming in from Demacia, 2 mana burst speed spell, give an ally plus 2 plus 2. Just really solid for what the card does. It's a Demacia staple, it's a classic now. Uh, yeah, just really strong overall. Next, we have Kinku Student, 2 mana, 3, 1. When another ally gets barrier, give me barrier this round if I don't already have it. So this is nice. It's a double dip on the barrier value. You can hit, like, Green Glade Caretaker with it, and then all of a sudden Kinku Student's also going to receive the barrier. Then she will get another plus 2 because that's the second thing that gets it. So you just, like, create a really strong 2-card combo with the Caretaker and Student on the board. Throw any barrier on one of them, and then Student gets it. It's just... Crazy, crazy amping attack. You can already see how abusive that combo is. So really, really strong card. Next, we have Petrocyte Broadwing, 2 mana, 0, 3, formidable. Attacks with HP instead of power, so 3 damage. When you summon another ally, grant me Challenger, just like our Fleet Feather Tracker here. And we're just going to be putting Barrier on this and having it strike for 3 instead of 2. So it's just like better Fleet Feather Tracker, essentially. Next, we have Triple Single Combat, another Demacia Classic. An ally and an enemy strike each other. If we strike our barrier unit to an enemy, then our unit will take no damage back from the strike, so single combat becomes a lot better immediately. Really, really strong card, really good at keeping the opponent's strategies down, maybe killing elusives with it, maybe killing premium champions that the opponent is trying to develop. Just good overall. 
Next, we have Blocking Badger Bear. Speaking of killing elusives, 3 mana 4-4. Four, four, I can block units with elusive. Really, really strong stat line. Really good with barriers. Really good at blocking. Just keeping control of the board, even if the opponent is playing a bunch of elusives. Next, we have Moral Support. It's a 4 mana burst speed spell. I cost 2 less if you've supported an ally this game. Our support effect is Shen Attack. That's our only one. So if you get that off, Moral Support will cost 2 for the rest of the game. Really good. Give an ally barrier this round. For 4, it's like pretty mediocre, but, but for 2, it's insane. So we want to get that as soon as we can. And next we have Shen, 4 mana 3, 5 with barrier. Support, give my supported ally barrier this round. So you just attack with Shen and then the next thing... Uh, on the right of him will gain the effect so super good we want to get that off and then i've seen allies gain barrier five times this includes himself so he will level if you grant four additional barriers outside of his summon and then he becomes super shen super shen does the same support effect however just a nice little passive here when an ally gets barrier also give it three zero this round this can stack from what i've seen you can do like multiple barriers and that will reapply and keep giving them plus three so that's really scary Next, we have Spirit's Refuge, 4 minute burst speed spell, give an ally barrier and a lifesteal. So this is really strong for combat because you can just heal up. So if you're fighting a more aggressive playstyle like Elusives or any burn Noxus deck, Spirit's Refuge can come in and pretty much win you the game if you resolve it at the right time. Screeching Dragon's a 5 mana 4 5 with Challenger and Fury. So the Challenger is super good, just like our Broadwing and Tracker, we want to grab things. It's really good to play Screeching Dragon on attack 5 after you develop Shen on defense 4 because it's just really hard for the opponent to actually out this combo. It's just a really strong board pressure attacking combo because you give this Screeching Dragon barrier and he's a 4 attacking challenger unit which is just so hard to deal with and he kills like anything that's been played before him so really really strong combo there. Next we have Jarvan. He also has barrier when he's summoned. 6 mana 6 4. When you attack you can pay my cost to summon me challenging the strongest enemy. So if you open attack on 6 and you have 6 mana, Jarvan will pay his cost to open attack with you, which is a really cool effect. He basically EQs straight onto the board, League of Legends style, coming out of Raptors onto mid lane for a very disgusting gank, and just like grabs something as well. He, he challenges the strongest enemy while also having barriers, so he'll strike it for 6, and that's super good. He levels up if allies have survived 3 strikes from enemy blockers. This should be pretty easy to do whenever we're attacking, because if our units have barrier, they survive the strike. And then he becomes Super Insane Jarvan. Super Insane Jarvan has the same attack effect, however, round start you create a fleeting cataclysm in hand, and then you get to play that. Also, whenever he challenges an enemy, he gets barrier for the round with his 7 attack body. So, what you want to do is Cataclysm Jarvan to something, and then that will challenge whatever you want, and he will strike it with barrier. And as he's getting barrier, Shen's bumping him up. Shen's also leveling if he's not already leveled, so just really, really insane combo. And to round us out, we have Sacred Protector, which is a 7 mana 8 6 on play. Give an ally barrier this round, also draw Shen directly from deck. So, that's super nice for consistency. Also a passive, allies with barrier have double attack, meaning they strike twice, which is absolutely insane if you already have Shen leveled. Then your units are going to be gaining like, you know, the plus three on the barrier, they're attacking twice. So each unit's just hitting the opponent for like six plus damage usually. And it's just insane if you get to this part of the game and you have the Sacred Protector up, you have like five dudes with barrier, the opponent just can't play, essentially. And you just, you just deliver like a massive beatdown. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for this example game, we're going to be fighting Jax Orn, which is another combat focused deck. They have Frostbites, which is actually naturally really good into us. So this matchup could go either way. We do have Shen and Kinku Student in our opening hand, which is really, really strong. And we have Broadwing and Single. I'm kind of down to just full keep this hand, to be honest. Single combat can come up whenever we do get barrier resolved and they tap below certain mana thresholds, they can't interact with us, and then we could just, you know, clean them up. Let's go ahead and do Broadwing on turn 2, Student on 3, Shen on 4. How's that sound? And that also floats our single combat or form up mana. So yeah, let's go ahead and slam the Broadwing. May use him to pressure. Sounds good to me. Kill the Omenhawk. We're left at 2 HP. We can get more value from this guy later. Two attack challenger unit, gonna be nice. Let's go ahead and play out the Kinku student on three. Hello Pioneer, that's actually really annoying, isn't it? This means I'm gonna have to do the form up, huh? That also can turn off our barrier. Well, that just got annoying pretty fast. I'm down to play the Kinku student though and just play the form up, all good. 
we're committing to form up anyways. We do not mind. Go ahead and whip that out. This is a good trade though. Yeah, if they don't have Sky Splitter, this goes pretty heavily in our favor. And then we play Shen here. He will gain barrier from his own effect. Oh, let's show top deck Shen. That's going to tilt them even more because we top deck Shen on turn four. That's insane. Ready? Watch them tilt. Shen on four. Barrier. She also gains barrier from her own effect. And then we give Broadwing barrier via Shen. Yeah, you better turn that off. Combat cook. That's no problem, though. We don't care. We actually don't care. Because what we're going to do is Shen give barrier to Broadwing. Broadwing grabs the combat cook dealing one damage because he has tough instead of two but we take no damage back because it's barrier so this is just worth huzzah it made no difference if shen had barrier or not this turn it just did not matter now if we play bright steel protector we just level shen on five which is just insane like i don't know how we got here but we kind of did hopefully they don't have uh, fish fight or entrancing lure though and kill my shen before i can do it i really want to play this bright still protector out like really really bad yes 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 develop our board set it up shen level i think we just won i think our form up play and our curve is just too nasty it, like we're just way too gross because now we can do single combat this turn they tap to zero look at how good we are Oh, we're just insane. So let's go ahead and kill the combat cook. And then, yeah, on open attack, we grab the Saudian with the Shen, and it's so good. We also win through Shen's spell in our hand. Oh my gosh. And that's it for Ionia. Extra shout out to the patrons on screen. Much love and thank you for supporting. So for some closing thoughts, Ionia very heavily gravitates towards elusive playstyles for new players. This is further pushed by Zed being like the only Ionian champion you start out with, and that's basically all he's able to do outside of Zed Gwen, which I covered in the Shadow Isles decks. I really wanted to also cover Shen Jarvan, since it's a really cool playstyle that takes Ionia to a different level with its own identity. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a sub if you're new, and also a like for the algorithm, that way other new players can see this video. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one. Laters!